The story I wanted to tell you last night, but couldn't for legal reasons that we've now sorted. It's about a very senior Labor politician who says he's Aboriginal, but seems could very well be wrong, and he isn't answering my questions. Now, this is a big deal for two reasons. One, Aboriginal activists are complaining that up to a third of our 810,000 Aborigines are actually whites, now, not Aboriginal in any meaningful way. The second reason it's important is that this politician is Kaya Ma, South Australia's Attorney General, who right now is preparing a state-based Aboriginal voice to Parliament, to the South Australian Parliament, that gives Aborigines far more political rights than citizens of any other race. And it is that statewide voice that will have interactions directly with decision makers. Uh, there will be a, uh, a legislated uh, ability to address Cabinet at twice a year. It allows for uh, once a year an annual address to a joint sitting of both Houses of Parliament. From now, what if most changes mean that white people claiming to be Aboriginal, like uh, Bruce Pascoe, end up with that extra power he's giving them, speaking in Parliament as Aboriginal representatives? What a farce that would be. So shouldn't such a massive switch to race-based politics come with much tighter checks on who is actually Aboriginal? And shouldn't Ma himself set an example by giving proof? Now, it was seven years ago that Kai Ma announced publicly he was Aboriginal. South Australia's newly appointed Aboriginal Affairs Minister has revealed an Indigenous background that he knows very little about. Kayam Mayer says his mother recently discovered she has Aboriginal bloodlines from Western Victoria. Mr Mayer says details of which Aboriginal nation have become lost over the past two generations, but his mother now identifies as a proud member of Mount Gambier's Aboriginal community. It's a, it's a story that's probably familiar to a lot of Australians. We, uh, family uh, history includes uh, Indigenous heritage. But it, for, for two generations, it's not something that the family discussed a lot. And it's only later in her life that my mum's become uh, reacquainted and more involved with, with her heritage. It, it's not something that played an active role in my growing up. And I didn't suffer the uh, discrimination and disadvantage that uh, many Aboriginal people suffer you know, growing up in Australia. Um, but it's something that I'm very proud of, is you know, part, um, part of my heritage. Now, well, that may very well be true, but something's curious here. Where is the evidence? Genealogists from the darkemuexposed.org website have gone through Mrs Ma's family tree, husbands too, just to be sure, and couldn't find a single Aboriginal ancestor. Digging deeper, they found that Viv Ma's story also changed. For instance, her claimed Western Victorian Aboriginal ancestry had changed to Tasmanian Aboriginal ancestry in an obituary for her in 2018. It said later in her career, Viv founded and found and acknowledged her Aboriginal heritage through a male forebear of hers married to an Aboriginal Tasmanian woman. The name of that wonderful woman was unrecorded, Viv said. So married, but the name of her ancestor not recorded. That's odd. And last year, the story changed again. Remember, we'd been told that Viv Ma discovered her Ab Victorian Aboriginal ancestry only late in life. But last year, her son, Kaya Ma, the Attorney General, said he was now of Tasmanian Aboriginal ancestry and his Aboriginality had always been known in his family. Now, I'm not claiming anyone here was dishonest. Maybe Mrs Ma got confused or made assumptions that turned out to be wrong or relied on what turned out to be false information and passed it on to his son. And don't forget, a lot of people these days really, really want to identify as Aboriginal out of the fullness of their hearts. And maybe they don't check closely enough if they really are. And true, on the other hand, you know, maybe the genealogist made a mistake and maybe we've all just misunderstood what Mrs. Mayer and her son have been saying. Maybe the stories don't actually, you know, conflict. And maybe they do have proof. I know all that. So Roger Carr, who's head of darkemuexposed.com, he wrote to the Attorney General last month asking if he could explain all this, explain his Aboriginal ancestry, maybe show some evidence. 
And I also wrote to the Attorney General last Friday asking the very same thing. And we've emailed and we've rung his office half a dozen times since the follow up. We know they've received their inquiries. They just haven't answered them. Just as they haven't answered Dark Emu Exposed. Now, I don't think that's appropriate. And not least because Ma should actually set an example. So that the Bruce Pascoe's of this world, they don't hog the benefits and the rights and the admiration let's face that they are res often reserved for Aborigines. And indeed, Barr himself seems to have profited politically by identifying as Aboriginal, certainly in the media, the first Aboriginal Attorney General in South Australia. And it's said that Aboriginality uh, spurs him on. It's only right, I think, that he proves he is Aboriginal in a meaningful way. Don't you?